Jim Gordon is trapped in an inferno. The industrial-sized furnace is burning his costume and searing his flesh. The gun is damaged. The temperature is 800 degrees and climbing. In about 30 seconds, Gordon will be turned to dust. It's time to do something amazing. He launches a batarang at an exposed coolant. He will do this. He will get out of this. Upstairs, the surviving gang members are fighting with one another when Batman emerges from the trap. He demands to know where Bloom is, but the gang members are furious. They swarm him and stab the man in the abdomen. Batman falls and they prepare to finish the man off. Suddenly, they are all engulfed in bright light and the mech suit appears. Daryl contacts Jim and says Julia is safe and they commence a rescue operation. Using the suit's autopilot mode, it charges the gang, picking up two dead sharks and using them as massive flails. The gang is knocked back, and the tech takes Jim out of the warehouse under heavy fire. Batman thanks the mech, calling it Rookie, and the rescue mission is a success. Elsewhere, Bruce Wayne inspects the wreckage of the Joker's attack during Endgame. Many of the parade floats have been dumped beside the learning center, and the city has been slow to clean them up. The Narrows, where the virus started, was hit hard by the events of Endgame. The dense population, lack of police and military, and widespread poverty ensure that more lives were lost here than anywhere else. It's always like this with the poorest areas during disasters, and this place is the last priority for government aid. This morning, Bruce found a few kids hurling dirt into the dump. When he asked them about it, they explained that they were trying to hide Joker's stuff, so the next time a villain attacks, they won't come here for his things. Wayne realizes this means the kids don't feel safe. They are just waiting for the next big attack. Julie Madison can tell that Jim Gordon's visit is still on the man's mind, and Bruce falls silent. She goes on to say during their childhood, Julie lived in perpetual fear of her father. But Bruce had always been strong, even back then, in the face of the traumatic loss of his parents. She asks if Wayne wants to be helping people on a bigger scale like he used to, but that man is gone. This new Bruce doesn't know anything about robotics or criminology. He doesn't have money or power either. The other day, he went back to the manor to look through some of his old clothes and try them on. But he noticed that the old Bruce Wayne had no pictures there. There was no trace of a life, of family or friends. The death of his parents did something to the old Bruce Wayne. And behind the facade, it was like he wasn't even a person. Being a part of things feels right for the new man. Julie says they'll figure things out, and what they do here matters to a lot of people. He kisses her on the forehead, declaring his love for this woman. Elsewhere, two guards are hit in the head. They fall down. Dead. Meanwhile, Jim Gordon goes to visit Jerry, the power CEO. She takes him to a glider her company has built. These machines smash together atoms to make new particles, but these new elements are usually very unstable. But last year, the powers company managed to create four new elements. Stable building blocks on a higher level of the periodic table of elements than was ever thought possible. She introduces Jim to the newest element, number 206, Batmanium. Even this small sample is too dense to pick up, weighing in at two tons. It also functions as a superconductor. Gordon is confused by all of this and wants to talk about Mr. Bloom instead. But Jerry interrupts the man. She's firing Jim. The dust up with the devil pigs is all over the news, and she wants Gordon to resign after going rogue. She offers Jim the opportunity to help them pick the next candidate, but they need somebody the public can have faith in. This new Batman is bigger than all of them, and the people need to be able to trust this new program. In the Powers building, Daryl is repairing the Batman suit when Duke breaks in. The two know each other and embrace. Daryl wants to make sure the boy is okay, but that is not why the young man is visiting. He gives Daryl the seed he stole from Bruce's office and asks him to find out more about it and Bloom. Daryl says nobody wants to catch this villain more than him, 
revealing that he helped the original Batman years ago try to find out what happened to his cousin, Peter Duggio. He looked for Bloom over many years, but could never find the man. Duke understands, and all he wants is some help. He presents Daryl with an extra Robin badge, insisting they are family and need to work together. Daryl reluctantly agrees to help, even though he insists the new Batman doesn't need a Robin right now. Over at the Learning Center, Julie is shocked to see that Batman is repurposing the Joker's old things into a playground for the kids. Bruce insists that these aren't ugly reminders of Endgame, but trophies of the people's victory over it. The kids should look at these and feel proud. That night, the Powers Company is holding a press conference to announce the resignation of Jim as Batman. Julia Pennyworth tells Jim that he should fight for his position as the Dark Knight. It's the people who ultimately decide who they want protecting them, and she says that Jim should go out there and show them that he is the one they need. But it soon becomes clear something is terribly wrong. The mobile Batcave, which should not be out right now, approaches Jerry from outside. Gordon leaps into action, telling everybody to get down, and for a rookie to take a knee. The automated mech suit obliges, Gordon leaps off of it, and he saves Jerry at last minute from being crushed by the wayward vessel. Everybody begins to panic and flee, but many people in the crowd are impaled by thin white tentacles. Wait, wait, wait! Hold on a minute! Where are you all going? The party's just starting. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Batman number 45. Well, it feels like it's been a while since we've checked in on the new Batman, but I enjoyed this issue. The art and writing are great, which at this point doesn't really surprise me. I've been on board with the creative team for a while now, and in spite of occasionally doing something weird or making choices I express doubt over, they have, on the whole, been doing some really remarkable stuff with Batman. Snyder and Capullo are a really good team that work well together and are telling a good, solid series of Batman stories. Sure, Batmanium is a little bit silly, but I do like how Snyder has been consistently bringing in real-world scientific ideas like the Hadron Collider and biological immortality into the world of Batman, and it's hard to fault him for what could be a pretty interesting idea if executed well. Just could we please pick a better name than Batmanium? That's a bit hard to swallow is all I'm saying. But overall, the new Batman is really starting to click with me. I liked and would recommend this issue. There's some highlights that I do want to talk about. I like the frantic rescue mission at the beginning. Honestly, if you still find yourself complaining after a mech suit starts swinging sharks around, I think you need your head examined or need to seriously reconsider your priorities. Because this is awesome! I'm also impressed at how Snyder manages to keep so many characters involved here without things seeming too complicated or cluttered. Duke and Daryl really showed some interesting colors in this issue as well. We learned how Daryl played a direct role in the events of Batman number 44, and we got a fun little nod to Duke's role in the We Are Robin series. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.